Hello everybody. Nazael here. This is some real talk about painting latex. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. And um just want to discuss on how we take a piece like this, paint it into something like this that will last, it won't crack, or anything like that. It's it's very important to the success of a mask maker, a prop maker to actually deliver a finished product that will last for years without the paint job cracking and being ruined over time. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there on the net about finishing products and stuff like that and through trial and error just discovered methods that um, actually work and methods that don't work um, when you have a fresh pole like this it's very very important a lot of times you'll notice you'll pull something out of a mold and there'll be calcium deposits on your latex a lot of people just try to wash it off stuff like that the easy way to do that is just get yourself some citric acid Get a little ball of warm water, put two teaspoons of um, citric acid in there, mix it up so it dissolves, and just go with a scrub brush and scrub all of your latex piece. Soak it in there for a little bit and just scrub, scrub, scrub. It'll take all the calcium deposit off completely. It'll eat it away. You won't see it again. What that also does is it opens the pores of the latex to um, make a better bond with your latex-based paint, which is very important. Your paint must be latex-based paint and needs to be flexible, especially if it's going to be a worn piece. If you're going to, somebody's going to wear the piece and needs to be latex-based. I tend to use latex paint base. It's, it's very liquidy. Um, I know there's people out there that take their casting latex and um, water it down some, add ammonia to it. I just don't want to bother my casting latex. It's just for that purpose, for casting. Um, Keep in mind, if you, it looks white, but when it dries, it becomes transparent, so you will have to tint it. You usually tint your latex with good old acrylic paints. Just make sure you have much more latex in the mixture um, ratio. It, I do it by eye. Let's say I put this much base paint, and I just put few drops of this until it actually changes to the color that I want and so on just don't blow this through your airbrush because this gets on the mask it'll actually crack and it'll ruin the finish um, I tend to use FW inks for washes and what else? After you're done painting your piece and you're happy with it, um, this is what makes and breaks a paint job, the sealing. You need to seal your piece, make it um, waterproof, helps it from cracking even more, and protects your, um, your washes because this is not latex based and um, your washes will actually come off you want to protect that and they have different products out there I have used this it has a matte it's a matte varnish I've had um, nothing but failure with this product actually as a finish because it dries up and it spider webs as it um, cracks and destroys your paint job this is probably good just for um, miniature bust painting and so on like that um, same company, gloss varnish, 
actually works really, really well. The only problem I have with this product is it's incredibly glossy. It's super, super shiny. And, you know, a lot of people out there will be like, oh, just dilute it with water. And you're just, I believe if you're diluting something with water, you're just changing the chemical composition and you're just weakening the product. So, I would use this a lot on eyes and stuff like that or gloss up some blood work. It really does pop. But I usually always 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 seal my mask with is um perma wet actually by monster makers um i've never had a problem with it it's a little bit expensive but um when you try to save money and go with something else and your work starts to fall apart it's not really worth it this goes a long way actually um a lot of people that might think Perma Wet produces too much of a gloss. Here's a good trick: just airbrush from a distance, about a foot and a half away. You blow it through. The closer you get, the wetter it'll become, and it'll dry incredibly wet. This has Perma Wet on it, and it's not super glossy or nothing like that. So. The closer you are with perma wet, the shinier it gets. The further away it is, the duller it is. Um, airbrush, very important. I have two type of airbrushes. Depending on the piece, I might work on a super high detail piece and it'll require a dual action airbrush, which is this, my Iwata. Incredibly fine detail, great for doing vein work, eye work, and so on. When you're using your base coat, I use my single action Pache. It's a workhorse, it's never let me down. Easy to clean up. Please don't not shoot latex paint through your dual action airbrush. You'll either destroy it or spend hours trying to get the latex out. It's not worth it. I only blow FW paints through this and they're actually cut down with um, alcohol, 99% isopropanol and um, water to get super fine lines and with a very low pressure on the compressor. So yes, two needed tools. If you want super high detail, vein work, eye work, a dual action airbrush is a must. Um, so a lot of people out there that are like, oh yeah, you could buy yourself a $20 dual action airbrush. I've used the $20 ones. Um, honestly, they can't compare to something that it's worth 200 bucks. It's not because I waste, not wasted, I invested my money into it. And I'm like, oh, my investment was worthwhile because I spent this much, it's fact. A $20 dual action airbrush cannot produce the lines, the thin work that you can with uh, more expensive tools. Um, you are as good, good as your tools. Give uh, an amazing artist shitty tools and he won't be able to produce what he usually does with a good set of tools. Um, this again is the workhorse base coats with this very thick paint high psi pressure i use about 50 psi to push latex through this brush um like a lower the nozzle for a little bit smoother lines and lower the psi on my compressor and i'll get thinner lines but not compared to this air compressor very important i have a Iwata Studio Series um, regulator, very important as well. Um, it's very quiet. I've been through multiple compressors and um, I've gone from the Harbor Freight little teeny weeny series that lasted me about five masks, um, which costs close to 100 bucks, not worth the purchase, to uh, something from, let's say, um, Lowe's that could shoot. Um, 
nail guns, incredibly loud. It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night and I couldn't turn it on because I didn't want to disrupt my neighbors with all the noise while the tank filled up. It's a very loud compressor. So I invested in one of these and um, I could paint at four o'clock in the morning if I want to paint a piece without a problem. Well worth it. I could connect two airbrushes to it. It's very quiet, incredibly quiet. But that's about it. Um, after you recap, after you pull your piece, you wash it, citric acid, you mix your latex paint base, make sure it's nice and covered all the way around. Do your acrylic washes or whatever paint methods you have. But most important thing, Monster Makers Perma Wet to protect your paint job. And you should be good. That's how I get it done. This has been Real Talk with Nazayel. Enjoy your day. Bye.